Well, Shalom, as you see, got my Yeshua t-shirt through the day, really happy with it, don't know if you can actually read that, but uh, yeah, this is cool, some uh, things through from a website, which I definitely recommend, um, I was watching some deliverance video recently, Gino Jennings, um, it's just the same laptop I had, by the way, in Africa. I had to get fixed. It had a virus on it, so still trying to get things organized. I guess it's coming back from there. Done quite a few things. Um, but Gino Jennings' deliverance um, video. And uh, Reverend Pagini is commenting on it, which I've been watching him regularly. I do highly rate him. He's a very rounded um, minister, as in good music ministry, good teaching, can preach well. He's had good experience, good testimonies. You know, takes a lot of boxes, um, and of course, glorifies the name of Yeshua and preaches the name Yeshua. And just to briefly touch on that, um, for some illiterate people, I guess. Um, when you read the scriptures um, in the Semitic languages, there's masculine and feminine, or it can also mean um, you can have a male name that has a submissive side and a sort of an authoritative side, as it were. Um, so it has these connotations, and you can have a female name which also has a submissive side and a and a, um, I was going to say authoritative side, but you could you could say it's a, it's a different type of, of thing, but, um, you know, um, a rock or a stone or a, a bush or a door can all, all have masculine and feminine meanings uh, in the Semitic languages, so you've seen my hoodie, and that says Yeshua on it, no, it says Jeshurun on the hood, but it says Yeshua on the back, and it's got a seven branch menorah on it. And that name is, in fact, in the Old, and I believe it's in the New Testament as well, but it's in the Old Testament. It's mentioned about, I think, at least a dozen times. And it's referring to the masculine name of Yehoshua. Yehoshua is like the name Joshua, what we get in English. But if you see the name Yahshua, that's the, the masculine or authoritative name of Jesus Christ, basically. And then a lot you'll also see this name, Yeshua, which is the submissive side. So you get Messiah Ben Joseph, who, you know, ended up being, uh, you know, I guess having to uh, go through the sort of almost die, as it were, and then become estranged from his brothers, you know, hated by his own brothers, and then he became, you know, the ruler of an entire earth, you know, second only to Pharaoh. Such so that's like in God's kingdom that, that Jesus is the ruler of the entire universe, second only to the Father. Okay, that's why we're Trinitarians, man, because it's very, very, very obvious and clear that the the the, the Jewish scriptures teach the Trinity, and that of course the Holy Spirit is the very essence of the Father and the Son. And even you know this is the manifestation, the Son of God that came into the earth to reveal those things to humanity that um, the promises that the patriarchs were given um, were manifest in Yeshua and he came to say look you know I'm the way the truth the life I'm basically the Godhead I'm also referred to as the son of God in heaven and earth because that's what the demons when they saw him you're the son of God you're the Messiah what are you doing here if he came to torture us before his time Yeshua just said hold your peace come out of him now, just um, may have, some of you obviously have seen seen deliverances. Um, I haven't happened to do any online, so you won't see any deliverances that I've personally done online because um, I could give you a few examples, but it doesn't really matter so much. But there's there's one in the book of Acts that um, someone was getting delivered from. Uh, spirit of divination which was following the apostles and 
the Spirit was crying that they are the true apostles. And this went on for, I think, a couple of days. And I think it may have been Paul that turned to the, or Peter, Paul or someone that turned to the woman, I think it was, and um, perceived that this was, in fact, a demon. You know, this was this was a divining demon. And uh, commanded it to come out, and the, the, the scripture says it came out in the same hour. So indeed, you know, it just depends on, I believe, the anointing that we have. But I think some of the bigger ones can take longer to come out, to unravel themselves from the individual. Things like dragons and serpents. And have done a deliverance on an ex Jehovah's Witness that did repent and stopped going to the Kingdom Hall, wanted to follow Jesus and ask God to deliver her from any spiritual power from that experience. And it turned out that um, a Christian brother brought her um, to see me and we went somewhere to do the deliverance. And in fact, um, it was a dragon that was in her and it took about an hour for it to come out. And of course, there's a, a brother a long time ago who we were kind of friends and um, we went to a certain place and um, yeah, it seemed that he had, he had this uh, spirit of a serpent inside him and that began to come out. But um, I think the, cir the circumstances in that weren't quite correct. I don't think he'd repented correctly or... Yeah, I don't think he'd really repented of his sin. Um, so I'm, I don't think it came out. But that's an example of that. Um, if you want to have a successful deliverance, you got to have the gospel being preached. If the demon's manifesting, you just you just tell it to be quiet. You know, hold its peace. Speak to the person. Do you know? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yeshua the Messiah. As your Lord and Saviour, ever done that before? Most of the time, the answer would be no. Um, they've not been to a proper church, um, and it is a discipleship issue, and it is the fact that um, some brothers or sisters come out a call into another one. You know, they might come out from the Catholic Church into the SDAs. They might go to the SDAs to the Jehovah's Witnesses, Jehovah's Witnesses to the um, some other. You know, church like um, Lutheran type church. I'm not saying that there's not any proper deliverances that go on there, but they're not known for that. Usually, you get Baptist churches, evangelical churches, Pentecostal churches that kind of know something at least about the spiritual realm. I'm not talking about most Baptist churches, I'm talking about some of them know about those things. And I'm listening to Reverend Pagini, I don't think he's aware. That this young man is definitely possessed by a demon, there's no doubt about it. He's having bad thoughts in his head, and so where do these thoughts come from? They come from demons. And so this man does, <laughs> indeed, the thought is very obvious that, yeah, he, do, he does have a demon. So it's, it's very much you versus them, and we got to create the right atmosphere as Christians to deal with them, and you got to have people praying, interceding in the Spirit, speaking in tongues, and someone basically telling them the gospel um, and basically just clearing that up with the spiritual realm that this person is in fact now choosing to follow Jesus Christ and in doing so then any powers, principalities, terrestrial spirits, um, clean, uh, sorry, unclean spirits will, will come out of them of course and demons will come out okay and they will, they will come out gradually. Some people might need a couple of deliverances, let's say, and they can take an hour. And but if if you're praying properly in the spirit, um, and not listening to them, just sort of ignoring what they're saying, and just continuing to pray in the spirit for it to come out. If you can speak in tongues, that's great. Um, because. I've just had many multiple deliverances been able to speak in tongues rather than just standing there saying come out, come out for, you know, until you're tired. You know, this demon's basically trying to make you tired. If you can just be praying in the spirit 
you know, it's very uplifting. It creates the right atmosphere, and that demon just knows it has to go, pack its bags and leave, you know. And it'll happen sooner rather than later. And if it has to happen later, then obviously it's, it's down to the person. The person may not um, be genuine, may not really want to follow Jesus, might not know enough about the gospel, might not have want to have a strong enough commitment to Jesus Christ, and therefore they're just going to struggle. And uh, in that case, you just have to say, well, um, give them give them some praise and worship music and say, listen to that. Like, don't switch it off. Go to your room. Pray that praise and worship music all the time. If you, if you've got any bad thoughts and such, then put that music on. Go out for a walk. Do something. Read your Bible. You know, and and try to pray. And and you know, they're obviously if it's a local church, they'll have prayer times and meeting times. A lot of churches have two or three times a week. And tell them to attend these prayer meetings, and uh, they'll eventually leave. You know, the demon will eventually leave the person. Hopefully, should should um, strengthen their commitment to God and become born again. You know, and uh, just takes longer for other people than you know. Some people can just do it rather quickly because they can see the power of God. They really desire God. They want God. Other people are a little bit unsure about what's going on, and that's all right because. There's so many church Christian denominations and things that seem quite confusing to people these days. So, anyhow, hope this video has been helpful and I'm very happy with my Yeshua t-shirt and other things that I got through today. So, may the Lord bless you and keep you. In the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, Shalom.